What's up YouTube? Welcome to today's video. So I'm going to be doing a Q&A featuring special guests. So we got someone joining us today. Good old Hasbro. <laughs> right, so I'm going to be answering some questions that you guys have sent in. We've got some quality ones as well, so I'm keen to go over them. And as I kind of go over throughout my day, I'll be answering the questions when I can. That's the way it's going to work, but I figured it's been a good few years since I've done a proper Q&A, so I wanted to sit down and take the time to answer your guys' questions. So, first one is a good question. We had two of these that are very similar. If you were to start again, how would you go about it? Like, what would you do differently? Solid question. I think looking back after seven years in the markets, coming into the trading game, there's a few things that I did right. There was also a few things that I did wrong. So how would I do it knowing what I know now going into the markets from scratch? So here's the way I go about it. I would, for the first two years, not focus on earning a single penny from trading. Right, I know a lot of you will be sat there thinking, oh, like, I want to be earning within six months, 12 months. It's not really how trading works, if you were being honest with ourselves. Trading takes a lot longer than what you initially thought. I think that's the correct path for everyone. It doesn't happen in six months, it doesn't happen in a year. You may get some form of short-term consistency, but you've still got a lot to learn. So for the first two years of trading, I wouldn't focus on earning a single penny from trading. If it comes as a side effect of you learning within that two year period, so be it. That's a bonus, take it as a bonus. But for the first year, what I'd personally do is I'd do the same thing, go to a nine to five, have that for a, probably about a year. And although it's gonna give you less time on the charts, it makes you prioritize and really get diligent with the time and management you have. So let's say you have three hours spare in the evening once you come home from work. Cool, that's the time you then focus on learning how to trade. And it means that you're probably gonna be tired, you're probably not gonna to want to, but that's where you do develop the foundations, that's where you develop the habit of pushing through when you don't really want to. That's what I had to do, that's what a lot of traders had to do coming into the game and I think it serves you really, really well. So I wouldn't take that away from my journey, I wouldn't take that away from anyone's journey. And I think if you go straight to full-time trading without having a single job or even working in your life, I think it serves as a disadvantage if you don't use it correctly because you become soft and because you haven't had to time manage in a correct way before so you end up wasting a lot of time. So full-time job, get yourself involved in that. Uh, be diligent with the time management you have outside of work and prioritize learning how to trade. After the first year, then I'd look to once you're in a position where you've got 12 months of savings locked off and you've got minimum pressure, you start to develop a little bit more as a trader, then I go into a part-time role once you're ready to give you a bit more time on the charts, to give you a bit more time to learn how to trade properly and also gain some live experience in the markets as the day-to-day -day unfolds. So let's say you had a, let's say four days a week, five days a week, you were involved in a five hour day job, part-time job, and it was in New York session. Cool, then you trade London. Or if your job's in London and in the mornings, then you trade New York, depending on your time zone. So I just make sure that you've got a session available for whatever job you're doing which will allow you to double down that session and learn how to trade properly in and out of that session. And in that time frame, just using the income you have just to pay off expenses, once again, you're not putting any pressure on your trading at this point because that's really, really key. And I think even if you do move into full-time trading, I think having another income stream alongside trading is also beneficial because naturally I've been in the markets for a long time now, you do have periods where the market's very slow. Like you may have three months where you don't really get that many trades. The market's so slow, not really presenting. All strategies have this. So in that time frame, to then depend on, right, these next few trades are really important to me now. You're going from process driven mode, from focusing on your routines, your processes, everything you're doing successfully, to then switching into outcome driven mode, which is the same mindset that a lot of people go into after doing prof firms because you got time limits, or at least you did, not necessarily now, you switch your mentality, you're going from process to outcome, and that serves as a problem for your trading performance, and you will see it. 
So yeah, that's an important thing. And as far as education, I just make sure, I think I did a lot of things right in terms of this, but make sure that I follow the simple rule of who do you listen to? You listen to people who have what you want and are in the position that you want to be in, or who have been where you are, or at least a few steps ahead of where you are. Those are the people you want to learn from because those have the valuable information to then teach you the right things. If you're learning those, you know, with someone on the same level, you, it's not going to be the same. Whereas if they've had more experience or they they are where you are, then it's a lot different, and you can approach it from a standpoint of these people are actually giving me the information that I need. And ideally, someone who's not being very flexy, you know, not posting screenshots of watches or money on Lamborghinis, that kind of stuff is very cringy. I always saw through that stuff, but I know a lot of people also fall for that stuff. So. Don't come into the markets and get sold on the flexi lifestyle because it doesn't have to be flexi. I don't think it is anyway. I think you you just have to become a very good person who runs a business because trading is a business. You've got to look at the different aspects of the business to improve all aspects of it. Um, so that's how you should see yourself instead of right. I'm gonna get a Lamborghini. It's not about that. It's deeper than that. So yeah, that's really what I'd say. And then other than that, just. Like I did, focus on the work. Focus on improving the mental game more than anything. Your technical skill, if I was to give my advice looking back, your technical skill is not as good as you think it is. So develop that more. But your mindset is also not as good as you think it is. So develop that more. Um, and really just focus on them both and, and make them come up in sync. Don't focus on your technicals to a point where your mental game is down here. And don't focus on your mental game to a point where your technicals are down here. Focus on them together, bring them both up, and then you'll be at a point where you can actually scale that in the future. Um, that's the best advice I give myself looking back and to anyone coming into the game, and also that's what I do differently. Right, so now moving on to the next question, which was from James. So James asks, what are some things in your life that you never talk about, but you're really proud of? I thought it's a great question to actually answer. Because what you guys won't know about me is that I'm actually quite a private person despite doing social media. And I'm actually more of a introvert. You know, I, I like spending time alone. It's where I get the most energy from. I can be uh, extroverted as well. And I can talk in front of people, etc. But I prefer naturally. I'm naturally an introverted person. So, you know, the trading journey, spending time alone has never been, really been a problem for me. But overall, Thinking back on this year, what am I really proud of? Um, I mean, kept it quite private, but I paid for my parents' holiday. That was like a quite a, a thing that I've always kind of wanted to do. Pay for them, no questions asked, just pay for it. Really happy to be able to do that and be blessed to be in a situation where I can actually do that. Take care of the people around you, that's the most important thing. Um, apart from that, having and developing a tight knit circle of people who I can really depend on and trust no matter where you go through good times to bad times and just be there for, for each other and I feel like some of the things I went through early in this year allowed me to really develop that inner circle a lot more tight knit have more trust in certain people and also just phase out people that were no longer a part of the picture so it gave me a really dialed in inner circle of people I can really trust and depend on like certain things that I went through that I needed the help of my inner circle to get through and vice versa that they went through and I was there to support them and then in good times when we're winning if one person wins we celebrate that if the whole group wins perfect like it's great to celebrate that and that if one person wins in the group it just creates that overall momentum within the group for everyone to then win so having that is a blessing in disguise honestly it's one of the biggest things i know i say i'm introverted and i can work alone but having a team having people around you who support you on your mission and you support them and you're there for each other as friends is so so key so so key i mean has bowlers in the circle and he'll know like he'll tell you like it's key um but yeah that's a big thing and apart from that a pretty personal private thing but I'll share it with you because I spoke about in the day in the life video me going through a detox protocol but I never actually told you why I was in hospital in the first place so I wasn't really ready to share it at the time but I'm ready to share it now so 
Yeah, August. Let's, let's take a throw back to August, right? I've just moved into the office. It's a huge goal for the year. And I was pumped, ready to develop it into my own space, which I've done now, of course. But at the time, this was a new space. I wanted to develop it. And I had a lot of momentum behind me. And then all along, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I get this huge lump on my neck that just expands and comes up over the course of a week. And it just completely throws havoc in my life. Um, so yeah, it was basically the side of a passion fruit. I couldn't sleep without it hurting. I couldn't eat properly because it was affecting my jaw. Everything was just affected because of this. And it affected my mentality because it affected my confidence because people could see it if I went out in public. And it just affected just all aspects of my life. So I realized that coming out of this, I needed to be a bit more stronger mentally. Um, but anyway, back to the point. I end up doing like standard protocol, you know, just go and get a diagnosis, go and get it checked out. Doctors didn't know what it was. Hosp hospital didn't know what it was. So I ended up getting blood tests and scans. Anyway, comes back that it's this thing called blanchial cleft cyst. So apparently I've had it since birth. You get it when you're like an embryo developing as a baby. And it's quite common in people, but most people just don't know it's there. Uh, which is absolutely understandable but something in your early 20s your late 20s can cause it to just pop up and just inflame basically so that's what happened with me and i ended up being in hospital for a night because i had a fever so they put me on a drip it wasn't a pleasant experience as i described in the last video but overall you know it happens anyway i go into appointments with doctors and they basically tell me right, you're gonna have to have this taken out. There's no other way around it. It's just something you're gonna have to deal with. You know, you, you could basically, basically gonna get a scar on your neck for the rest of your life. Like all these things, the doctors were in my ears just telling me that. And I'm just sat there like, nah, this can't be the way. Like my heart just dropped. And I was like, surely this is not the path I've got to take. Um, and because of that, those doctors opinions then rubbed off on some of the people closest to me. And then they were voices in my ear. And it was just this overall cycle of being in that space mentally. So I just had to really focus on myself. Um, so I just told them, I told them my honest thoughts, which was, I'm not getting surgery. I'm gonna try and do this myself. I'm not sure how, but I'm just gonna figure it out. And of course, when you say that to a doctor, they, you kind of, you know, they're doing the job and doing everything on their job, which is absolutely fine. I do not discredit that at all. What, I, what they do is respectful. But when you say that to a doctor, they look at you as if you've got two heads. Uh, so that's pretty much what happened. Anyway, come out of that protocol and I'm like, right, I'm gonna really focus on my health. I have been focused on my health anyway, but I need to take it to that next level to get myself in a position where these kind of things don't happen. So I hired myself a health and detox coach. Um, and this guy I've been following for three, four years, been following his journey, been following his, his journey with clients, etc. So I understand the results he's had. And straight away, that was my intuition, like get a coach. I have no idea what I'm dealing with here. I need some advice, I need some guidance. That is not the corporate, you know, you need to get surgery, that kind of stuff. I didn't need to hear that. So <clears> hired <throat> this guy, got a consultation, got a full health protocol sent out to me based on my needs and the way my body works and basically gave him, you know, my overall health and stuff. I'd you know, just every, anything I'd had as a kid or growing up just gave him the the, uh, the logistics behind it, etc. Just he did a full health assessment on me, put me on this protocol, which is going to sound strange to a lot of you, but it was a fruit based diet for six weeks alongside herbs and tinctures to basically pull parasites out of the body, to drain the lymphatic system, to support the endocrine system, to support your brain and nervous system when you are on fruit, all these kind of things and that completely changed everything. It was hard, fruit only diet alongside herbs was not easy. And I did that for a good few weeks. But my problem was because it was my first time doing a proper cleanse, I'd done fruit fast in the, in the past, I've done intermittent fasting for years. So I was very clued up on that, but I've always wanted to do a cleanse, but I wasn't really sure in the exact specifics of how to do it. So I came off a little bit too aggressively. Over the first few days after ending the fast, I was back on meat and I was back on meat twice a day and then having eggs and all this stuff just caused everything to inflame again. So I realized, right, what I was doing before was working, 
but I just need to do it a bit differently this time. So I got in contact with him, did one-to-one -one coaching with him properly. And I was like, right, we're doing six weeks this time, fully fruit-based diet, and we're gonna get it to a point where it doesn't come back up again. It's just completely healed. That was the goal. Um, and anyway, as soon as I got back on that, because after I finished phase one, I'm in phase two basically now, coming into the back end of it. After I finished phase one, it was a case of it came back up again and I was just super upset and I was like, oh, all this detoxing for nothing and it felt like it was a, you know, I was like, it's just me nothing. Um, but anyway, came back into phase two and within a few days of going back on the fruit, everything healed up. You, can, you won't be able to see it anymore either, like it's, it's gone, but it was basically the size of like a passion fruit before and just just absolute blessing in disguise. Also as well, some benefits that I've got from it. Your tonsils naturally tap, carry toxins in the body. So before they were quite swollen. I just thought it was day to day, I just thought it was me. But figures out, turns out that it was quite swollen before. They ended up halving in size by the time I came off phase one. The brain fog that I was experiencing or the irritability that I've sometimes experienced when I'm on the market, so that was gone, completely vanished. My skin cleared up, so many benefits, just the energy levels completely different. So phase two, I was kind of excited for this and yeah, you know, fruit-based diet only is not easy at all, but the amount of benefits I've received from this has been unreal and it solved the initial issue. And then anyway, two days ago, I have another hospital appointment basically to check up on how things were going. It was a pretty cool moment for me because I walked in and this doctor had never seen him before in my life. He was like, you know, how are you? How's the lump? And I was like, I'm good, doing really well. It's not there anymore, it's gone. And he was like, like what? I like, checked it out, wasn't there. He was like, wow, like, how's this happened? Like, you know, what have you done? So basically just gave him, a, I gave him like an, a basic overview of like, I've been eating healthily, etc., And like, I've been doing a detox and all this kind of stuff. And he said, right, that's great. Like eating healthily is a, is a good thing to do. And I was like, no, no, no. I haven't just been eating healthily. I've been doing a full detox fruit protocol with herbs and, and it kind of rolled off his head. I, didn't, I don't think he really took it in what I was doing. Once again, looked at me as if I had two heads, which is not his fault. It's just different perceptions. Um, and then, yeah, he basically told me that like, well done, like whatever you're doing is working, keep it up. And uh, yeah, it was just a pretty proud moment for me because I came out of that appointment and I was like, I just feel amazing because all these people were telling me you've got one option there is not another option available you're gonna have to do this and i was like no so my ability to listen to my internal dialogue and trust myself and my instinct that gave me so much confidence in myself because i've done it throughout my career anyway i've done it with trading it's the reason i got in trading in the first place i've done it throughout life in different avenues but this just took it to the next level where i was like oh my days like i feel so good about this um so very much a proud moment and uh yeah it just really shows you anything is possible obviously if it was a different and it was something a bit more serious then obviously different ball game but thankfully i was able to take it upon myself to then put things in place trust my inner instinct trust my inner self and just do it so that's what i did a device if price doesn't tap your entry and leaves you behind or keeps trending. Honestly, you've got to just accept it. I know that sounds very bold, but you can't start thinking about all the trades that missed your entry by one or two pips. It's happened to me on multiple occasions. There was a trade this week where I never set the limit order for a reason where it was a bit more aggressive, but had I done so, the trade itself would have missed my entry by 0.4 pips. So it's gonna happen and it's gonna be slightly annoying, but the key thing is don't overinvest in the emotion of, you know, I got missed on this trade, I got swerved on this trade. That's a whole cycle in itself and you just attract more of it. I would just say, accept it's gonna be slightly annoying. You see the language of which there that I'm using. Yeah, it's slightly annoying, but I'm not over investing in the emotion of that. I'm not thinking, Oh, like my day's ruined, like my week's ruined, I've missed this trade, it's not come back to my entry. You know, I'm not doing that. It's just like, right, is what it is, part of life, part of the game. It's slightly annoying, maybe a little bit annoyed for five, 10 minutes. Once that's passed, journal it, 
journal any emotions you have and then move on. Simple as that. I don't start thinking, right, I've got to jump in this trade right now and get involved in the trade because price is going because there's going to be situations where price would have actually tagged your entry had you not get chased the trade anyway and you would have been in at a better price. So you've got to stick to your plan. It's as simple as that. There's going to be months where I've had it in the past where you you get certain months where you're swerved a little bit more from price. Price misses your entry by one or two pips. Part of the game, I'm afraid. Part of the game, the quicker you can accept that, the better you will do in trading. Couple speed round questions to finish up. Uh, would I trade forever? I'm not sure. I'm not actually sure. A part of me thinks, right, I might get to the age of, let's say, 35 and by judging by the let's say wealth you've acquired then you can start using that wealth to give to other traders to then develop if you've obviously let's say let's say you've spotted them out and the great traders and you can develop something where they trade part of your capital for you not sure not sure how things are going to develop but for the time being i love trading i absolutely do um, but in in terms of 10 20 years time i'm not sure we have obviously obviously the development of things like AI coming into the mix. Will Forex pairs be available in another 10 years? Don't think so. So it's just the case of developing as the times come. Um, but for, for, the, for the next five, 10 years, I love trading. I love what I'm doing. This is my mission and I'm proud of the journey that I'm on. And it's just developing every aspect of my life anyway. Um, but yeah, I can't really answer that. Can't really answer that. But the, the, I always fight with the thing of Will I be trading in 15, 20 years? Or will I get to 10, 15 years and realize, right, I want to focus on other aspects of my life. This is where I then deploy capital in other areas, such as investments, which I also do now, and then traders to actually trade the capital for you or like some avenue of that. So I think time will time will be its essence. Time will tell. Uh, will I always stay in the UK? <laughs> Tricky question. I'm honestly not sure. I'm... I've got plans to spend some time away in other countries, so one of them is coming up shortly, which would be good, but I don't know. I don't know until you try. I think until you start to live in different areas of the world, Asia, Australia, Europe, America, you will never know. You will never know. So I won't know until I try these different areas. All that I know is that I love Europe, I love the Mediterranean. I can see myself going there a lot more over the next few years. Spend some time there. I'd love to go like away for a month and then just like just enjoy, just enjoy time. Take trading out there as well. Just enjoy that whole lifestyle a little bit. But as far as longer term, I don't know. It kind of depends on the economy. Depends the way things are run. A part of me likes the UK and a part of me doesn't like the UK. Um, and over the last three years, I've kind of not liked it as much, but we will see, we will see. A part of me also thinks I will have a house here and a house somewhere else, abroad somewhere, so I'm not sure, time will tell. And then how many trades do you take a month on average? It honestly depends on the month. Like, I would say three months ago, it tend to be between eight and 15 trades a month, but then recently we've had a couple slow months, so it honestly depends, you know. Um, and then in a busy period where you take maybe 20 trades, it can vary quite a lot. But I'd say on average, I'm gonna stick with the whole eight to 15 trades a month. Um, it tends to be lower in slower months and it tends to be higher in quicker months. But hope you've all enjoyed this Q&A. It's been a long time since I've done one of these, but I actually really enjoy just answering questions off the top of my head. Not really thinking about it too much, just giving the first answer that comes to mind. And hope you all enjoyed this video too. I've got a Q&A in 45 minutes, so I'm gonna crack on with that. But have a good rest of your day, enjoy the rest of your weekend, and I'll speak to you all next week.